guys, I'm Kate. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to what's turning into my unofficial Camp Nate Arrival Countdown, aka Prep Month, aka Prepoon. <laughs> Prepoon, it's June. <laughs> It's June and it's Prepoon. Okay. <laughs> Today's topic is all about utilizing one of the greatest things known to mankind, and that is music. And I'm gonna use this in order to better connect with my story and especially to my characters. I have multiple ways that I'm gonna try this out for July's camp and several ways that I've never tried before, so I'm so excited. <laughs> Let's go ahead and jump into the first one, the one I'm most excited about, and that is character anthems. I'm continuing the project that I started in April's camp, which is my Princess Bride meets Scooby-Doo comedy horror spoof novel. But the craziest part about all of this for me not necessarily the premise of the story, is that I'm writing in seven different point of views. And this was so difficult for me. If y'all watched any of my Perparch videos <laughs> last time, or if you watched any of my camp videos, especially my week one, kind of summarizing it. Actually, I talked about it in multiple videos where I was really struggling <laughs> with nailing these characters. I just found the switching between point of views and very distinct voices to be a little bit more difficult than I'd anticipated, especially when there were seven of them. So this time I'm gonna use music to get me into a very particular headspace for each of those characters. And look, we all know that this is the one advantage, the sole advantage, that DC movies have over Marvel. And that is the freaking theme songs for the characters. When Wonder Woman comes on the scene and you have the ah. I can't do it, but in my head it was perfect. <laughs> so why can't I do that? Why can't I set up a song for each character so that when that character is going to be on the scene or bursting in or it is their chapter, I will have that in my mind. And there is no reason, I totally can, and I'm totally going to. In April, I found that fan casting my characters really helped me because another thing that I struggle with personally is just description and describing my characters especially. And so having that mental image of them was so helpful. So I'll link that video in the cards up above and down below. And I'm also gonna flash the actor that's kind of representing the character on the screen while I talk about their individual anthems. And I think with these two things combined, I'm really going to nail it this time because I didn't struggle with all the characters. Some of the characters I was really good at, but frickin' Andy, okay? <sighs> So we're especially gonna work on Andy. <laughs> now the other key thing here is that all of these songs have to relate to the characters, but they have to be songs that I am willing to listen to multiple times over. So while I think that some of these characters would have different tastes in music than me, that's too bad. <laughs> and of course, part of choosing these songs is that I know the progression I want the characters to take throughout the novel. So I say anthems, maybe it's more like theme songs. Maybe it's not, but you get my point. <laughs> so first up, we're gonna go with Eli. My lovable, naive, sweet with a heart of gold and the money bags of the group, <laughs> Eli. His song would be Lay Me Down by Dirty Heads. It's kind of a chill, beachy vibes, and not that I think Eli is particularly beachy, but he definitely has that go with the flow, life is life. He's had all the money in the world, so he's never really worried about things. He's just kind of, eh. For Marissa, the celebrity-obsessed flirt who has a knack for letting her curiosity get the best of her, I chose She Loves Control by Camila Cabello. Yeah, that's her song. <laughs> for sure. Some of these I had to take a little bit of time to come up with, but no. This is her anthem. This is, this is it. And unlike Eli's song, you can kind of gather just by the title. Marissa does love control. <laughs> Moving on to trade the business mind behind the group and the kind of guy with the social savvy that like people immediately open up to. I chose Legend by The Score. And yes, I did get this off of the Lucifer soundtrack, but it is so good. <laughs> I find Trey to be just such a badass and Trey's really kind of coming into his own in this book. So yes, Legend by The Score. <laughs> Next up is Andy, the unofficial, unappointed leader of the group <laughs> and one half of what he thinks is a power couple. <laughs> Freaking Andy. Andy gave me so much trouble last time because he's just so much more straight-laced and I don't want to say normal but some of the other characters are just so very eccentric in comparison that Andy's just like what up bro kind of thing <laughs> but because he does think of himself as a leader I ended up choosing count on me by default and I think that's something that I need to keep in mind when I am writing his character so I think that his anthem is going to be the most helpful for me moving on to the other half of the power couple we have Jennifer now she's probably the actual leader of the group she just has that kind of commanding presence and she's the only one who's actually looking forward into the future after graduation when she can't just do this semi-ghost hunting business thing. Her song would be Independent Women Part 1, 
by Destiny's Child. Y'all know this song. You probably love this song as much as I do. For the final lady of the group, we have Holly, the tech genius pre-law student, and one of the only members of the group who believes she's seen an actual ghost. And her song would be Machine by Mr. Wives. Not only do I actually think this would be a song that she would listen to, but I think the whole line of we're not part of your machine, that would speak to Holly on a soul level. And for our final guy, we have Reggie, the kind of quiet slacker of the group, but he is an exceptional snoop. And one of the other remarkable things about him is that he kind of thinks all the rest of the group are just super ridiculous. And so he has been someone that I found very fun to write, not as hard as some others. But his song would be Sunshine Riptide by Fall Out Boy. So now that I have the character anthems done, one of the other ways that I'm going to be utilizing music this month was actually inspired by another fabulous author tuber. I've talked about her a lot on this channel and that is Emily Bourne. In her one minute writing advice video, she was actually saying that a great way to listen to music is to have a playlist set up and only listen to it in that order. That way it really sinks into the background. And that's something I never would have tried before. I am a shuffle queen. <laughs> I just rotate all my songs all the time. And this makes total and complete sense to me because the shuffling aspect of it kind of like, I do that so that it, it keeps everything fresh and new and exciting and gets me in like a different kind of mood each time a new song comes on. But if you have it, all together in one playlist that stays in the exact same order. I really think that allows it to be kind of one more cohesive song in the background rather than like, ooh, new, 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 which is the opposite of what you want when you're trying to be in the zone. So I'm working on a playlist that's a little bit creepy, a little bit cool and fun, that blends kind of the feel of the novel that I want to get across. That playlist that I will not be shoveling through will also not include the actual anthems. I'm going to put the anthems in a separate playlist so that I can play them to get into the mindset and then transition over into the creepy cool playlist. And finally, the not so new bit and the pretty common writing advice if you're going to write with music is to not listen to music with lyrics. For some people, they prefer classical music or movie soundtracks, but I prefer a very specific playlist on Spotify called Brain Food and I do think it has some songs that actually have lyrics in it but it mostly is lyricless kind of low-key electronic music and I like it so much that I actually have it put on my NaNoWriMo profile. <laughs> Be my buddy, link down below so you can tell how much I enjoy it. All right, those are three ways that I'm going to make music part of my Camp NaNoWriMo experience, something that I haven't really tried doing before and I'm so pumped. Please work! Please comment down below and let me know what your major or minor character anthems would be and or what your personal anthem is. I'm always awful at picking that, which is why I'm not saying it now. I'm just gonna let you tell me yours. <laughs> <laughs> and also, if you'd like to tell me who you would fan cast your characters as, I would love to hear about it. I know when I made the video in April, a couple people were actually saying how instead of picking out specific actors, they'll go onto Pinterest and kind of pick a nameless model. And I think that's pretty ingenious, and I might do that in the future for another story. But right now, I really have the look and the mannerisms for this story kind of down pat, so I'm going to stick with it. But could be something I try in the future. So comment down below, let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all very soon with a new video. Bye! That I'm going to be writing in Severin Dif- is that I'm writing in Severin Dif- Shreven. For Marissa, the solo- for Mar So now that I have the character anthems done, the other way that I'm going- one of the other ways that I'm- oh my god. So, wow.